This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. Apparently, the um, who's the actor from Yellowstone? Who's the old rancher dude? Sam. Sam. Al well, no, no. So, uh, old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was in Tombstone too, by the way. Oh, um, apparently um, yeah, he Sam, Sam, uh, got like he got thrown Sam off or Sam left. Elliot. Yeah, he left or got thrown off a plane. Yeah, on a kicked flight. off the plane because he refused to sit down next to someone with a mask. Yes. <laughs> Is that true? He's, yeah. he's super old school, like I Texas. I love Harry. Harry. Yeah. I love Harry. Yeah, yeah. Which I love. Respect. Nah. For sure make you fly, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I would have I would have stayed on my flight. However. I'd be like, this is ridiculous. You do but you, I, man. Yeah. Should we tell me about Kelly Slater and what a killer he is? Like, just how, what an extreme killer oh, he is. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Fuck. Outlier. Yeah. yeah. Outlier. Kelly Slater. I was telling yeah. him when I was watching The Last Dance. Um, Jordan, yeah. I just, I was like, wow. All of these traits, I... I I know Kelly. Kel Kelly is like a direct the parallel same, to surfing. Correct. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Kelly and I connected because he'd always uh, reach out to me for UFC fights. Mm -hmm. Like he loves UFC. And then he has a clothing brand in Malibu, and I'd always buy stuff and then post. Yeah, you know, he'd see me wear on the yeah. show. He's like, "Dude, quit buying them and send it to him." Like, no, it's a new store. I'm gonna support you. Yeah. But then um, he was like, "Come work out with us. Do something." I looked at the work. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Like he's a <laughs> yeah. outlier. He's in, but just outlier. like the he's mental, the of all time. tell him, tell him, tell him about what he said. Well, just the mindset of of like if it's it's like competition is real, and if you're not getting what you need from your opponent to like trigger that next levelness, like killer instinct, then he will create it himself. Yes. Like he'll he'll come up with this whole thing in his mind, and you know there's been documentaries done about this and interviews done where uh, as soon as like that horn sounds and you're paddling out in the heat, it's just like, hey, we could have been best friends since we were six years old, but I will fucking destroy you. He's such an outlaw. And then we'll hug each other at the yeah. end. God. Yeah, his opponent with with his opponent, that guy, he was like, what the fuck were you doing? But but, but what was yeah. stupid. But then think about yeah. it. So people are like, oh, UFC fighters so brave and. Kelly Slater, big wave surfing. No, I mean, come on. Fuck a yeah. human. He's doing big wave. Like, yeah, he they, was they actually. Can die. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. wild. Dude. Yeah, well, outlier. Yeah, yeah. Can't MMA fighters die too? No one's ever died. Is that right? Yeah, but it's, it's scary. In MMA, yes, but not in a UFC. No, and you all I'm talking oh, okay. about is UFC, okay. like major okay. sports, like yeah. the other underage, like the weird leagues in Brazil. I'm sure some yeah. happen to, but as far as like. Big league it's stuff. More boxing, never. boxing, you die. Yeah. I don't know. You take so, more so shots. So what's? I mean, obviously, I know the difference between the two sports, but what what is it about the UFC that has made it like there's there's never been a fatality or a death from it? I'm just I, curious. Yeah, I because in boxing, right? So in boxing, if me and Brian are fighting, yeah. I knock him down. Yeah. Clearly, he's concussed. Yeah. But they have an eight count. So oh, if he answers I that gotcha. eight count, okay. then you go back out and okay. fight, get more punches in the head, you get knocked down again, yep. clearly concussed brain trauma, That's they stand him back up. Mm. So the brain swelling just keeps going. That makes and sense. the UFC, if I clip Brian, he's a little wobbled, and then I go in and finish him off, yeah. it's over. Yeah. yeah. But that makes with boxing, they just sense. keep putting you out there. Wow. <sighs> Super scary. dangerous. Yeah. Let's rock and roll. I mean, UFC is dangerous. What? We've been rolling? Oh, we've been yeah. rolling. Oh, sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry enough. Because we, we're just going, right? Okay, we're with yeah. Tulsi Gabbard right. here, and we're just talking, yeah. fighting. Introduce the legend. Well, I've been a fan for a hot second. Oh, yeah, I was on you. Rogan saying, you should be the president, just to be very clear. <laughs> yeah, thank that's you. That's true. And then and then became an even bigger fan we left the Democratic Party. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's her book, Why I Left that, the That is the book country. here, and that's where um, I wrote this book after I left the Democratic Party. And the original subtitle is for love of country. I was going to say why I left the Democratic Party, but given everything that's that's happening in the country, I changed it to leave the Democrat Party behind. Love it. Damn. There's a clear call to action, um, and it's not like Democrat, you know, evil Republican, angelic or holy. It's no. just, you know, I talk about my experiences over 20 years a Democrat. What I went through, what I learned, and, and what I saw that ultimately brought me to that point where uh, I had exhausted all means that I felt I could try to change things from within and, and continually faced, uh, to use the word resistance puts it kindly, yes. to any kind of positive change that would, that would bring the party back to being the party of JFK and the party of the people. And unfortunately, it, it went from very hard and very bad to exponentially destructive 
Damn. which is where we are what now. What was it? Was it just extremist elements who came in with, with a very far left agenda? That's, what was, that's was, was there a moment that you saw where you just, was there a moment you remember where you went, this is too much, I got to turn? Uh, you know, there, there's been a slow build over time. And yes, you know, there, there have been waves of, of like the wokeness uh, radically escalating the level of purity tests radically escalating where you couldn't just sit there and say, well, yeah, no, I, I don't agree with you on that and be like, okay, well, let's go work together on this other thing. If you disagreed, then you were demonized. And even if you're like, okay, well, yeah, I think I can get there with you on this issue. It was never good enough unless you were uh, proclaiming it from like the mountaintops. Like blind faith. If you were screaming yeah. on the house floor. If, you, if you're a white abolitionist almost, but you, yeah. you, did you, did your Samoan heritage shield you from some of that insanity? No. No, no. you're <laughs> just a white supremacist. That's, that's where, I mean, and yes, and I've been called a white supremacist, a racist. Uh, I've been called every name in the book. And, and, you know, in, in 2020, when I ran for president, there were multiple women running for president in the Democratic primary at that time. And um, the interesting thing that, that was exposed to those paying attention was, you know, oh, we're all about this is a historic election. We may have the first woman president, all this other stuff and advancing the rights of women of color and uplifting these voices that have been suppressed, like all of this stuff. But anytime it came to, to me, because I didn't fit into their little cookie cutter of what they envisioned or the compliant voice that would just go along with whatever the party leaders wanted, um, I was literally uh, like in news coverage of, of a women's event, for example. There was an event in Texas called She the People that was specifically to highlight the fact that you have multiple women running for president at the same time. Never happened before. In the news coverage after the event, um, my, in the Washington Post, my name was not included in the event at all. Wow, it, was, it was as though I wasn't there. And so I, I naturally am like, okay, well, maybe somebody made a mistake. <laughs> Had my press person call and say, hey, you know, she was there. She spoke along with all these other presidential candidates. And the, uh, the senior political reporter who wrote the piece, he said, I am under no obligation to report the fact that she was there. Oh, wow. That's it. And that's, that's like the playbook that they used against me. They've used it against Bobby Kennedy. They use it against anyone who dares to challenge, uh, to challenge their position or their authority or someone who they deem a threat. But well, them demonizing you, it just shows how crazy and maddening the Democratic Party is because you check all the boxes that they want. Female, yeah. Veteran, yeah. Color, you but know. Veteran, it, but it, that, you that check every them. single box. But that scares yeah. them. So when the, when the, and the, you know female, so it's like, well, this is what you guys want, yeah. And then they demonize you. It's like, yeah. oh, this isn't. They're not about making a change. Yeah, no. This isn't good. No, they're about control and power. But my, my question for you, Tulsi, which I don't understand, is like with the extreme like wokeness and the 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 far left, like how's it go how's it going? Like what's the plan? <laughs> You know what I'm it's saying? A like, great question. Like for for anyone that votes, and I, you know, I I think most politicians are corrupt and it's a little dicey. So I, you know, I don't pick sides there really, but sure as hell don't pick left. Yeah. But my thing with that is, if someone's going to vote that way, how how can they continue to vote that way when you look at the blue states? It's a disaster. Yeah. So I I just don't understand. Even if you are, you know, pro blue and you want to go left, like what's the benefits? Because look at how it like. My only question for those people that vote that way is, how's it going? Like, right. what good has come out of the Biden cabinet? Like, we're in a, it's a disaster right now. Yeah. Nowhere safe. We defunded the police. Mm -hmm. Crime's up. Homeless is up. Like, we're not doing well. So I just don't see how they can keep leaning into that. Um, a few things. You can't apply logic and rational thinking to their whole agenda and philosophy because it defies objective truth it defies the fundamental principles that this country was founded on and so even if you if you look at what they're doing from an objective standpoint of of exactly that why are they doing what they're doing and what are they gaining from it well they are in you know they own the white house they have they're running the executive branch the senate has a very slim margin and they are in a battle for power they their major backers are the ones who are driving their agenda. Like, and I'll, like I'll, use, like I'll use an example. Yes, George Soros, who's behind the quote-unquote progressive 
prosecutors who's behind the whole defund the police thing. And again, if you look at, well, look at the results of their policies, it's very clear to people in the country and anyone who's open-minded, it's very clear to people who are having to live with the consequences of those policies. And yet I, I like, I, as I was, as I was doing the research over this book, I started looking up uh, just coverage of quote unquote progressive prosecutors. Cause I'm always interested in what's the count your question. What's the counter argument? What, how are they justifying these policies that just don't make sense? And they find a way to justify them in the name of um, humanitarianism, in the name of equity, in the name of criminal justice reform, in the name of, you, you heard it from AOC that all of this like rampant burglary and crime and theft is because people are just hungry and they want to steal bread to feed their hungry child. Yeah, right. It's but so the thing wild. is, they, they really, I believe she believes that. You think so? There's yes. no way. Because I feel uh, a AOC for every flaw she has, she has to be a pretty smart human being. To get what she's, I don't at, think she, she has is. to be pretty smart. She, she's ambitious, not smart. Nah, she, she, also, has, she has to. She's doing something she right. Knows she knows how to know wield. She knows how to wield influence. Correct. That and much is clear. Correct. So to my to that point, it's like she has to know that this isn't going to end well. So so I, I'm my, not confident. I, I don't agree. With that's that. not I don't how she that. was Maybe, educated, Bubba. But but even but even with the Democrats and you know the woke I, yeah. ideas that they have, it's like hold on. When you look at the agendas, is the plan just to. You just want to burn down America? Like, is that the plan? Kind of. Because the way we're headed, like, that's your plan? Yeah. But their plan, before, correct me if I'm wrong. But for Americans, who would sign on but, to but, that? But, but yeah. that's correct what I don't me understand. Their plan is, if you look at what these kids are being taught in college, and if you look at these the, the humanities, the idea behind critical race theory, behind the, all these things is, we have to tear down these institutions because they're inherently racist. The mm -hmm. system is inherently racist. It's called systemic racism. And it's a patriarchal, it's a tyrannical patriarchy and all that stuff. So the only way to change it, burn it is down. to burn it down and then rebuild it in a Marxist ideology. In a, in a, in a, when you talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, there's no way to do that without keeping special people down. Yes. You've got it. You've got to force, force equality as far as like that's why we're Larry Fink. From Blackwater equity. says he got. We're going to have to force behaviors. Yeah. And when you hear that, man, that that's that should that should be the biggest red flag. Yes. Let's take a little break. Let's talk about five CBD. I want to talk about getting your buzz on. And boy, you're going to need it if you have anxiety at night because of politics or the climate right now. Whatever it is, you need some CBD. So THC, really. You need the yeah. five daily buzz gummies. Contain two to five milligrams of THC. That's just enough to get you nice and calm. Look, not worry about problems. It's fully legal. Ships to all fifty states. Third party lab tested. Grown in the USA, and you can get it free. You can get it free. Try it out by visiting 5cbd.com slash fighter, all right? And they got a whole bunch of flavors that are really, really good. It's all 5CBD products are CGMP and U.S. Hemp Authority certified. I don't know what that means, but it sounds pure. It sounds very good. Yeah, so you if can you get go, a $40 bottle yeah, for free. Man, for free. for shipping and handling. Just go to 5, that's F-I-V-E, CBD.com slash fighter. You get your $40 bottle free. Just pay for shipping and handling. Again, that's 5CBD.com slash fighter. It, right? it is They're, that. It is that. Uh, that hatred of what they view America to be, mm -hmm. an actual wow. hatred, um, and this desire to rebuild it in something that they view as a utopia in their mind, God. which leads to a mo the, the deepest problem of all, which is they really, whether they realize it or not, they think they're God. And that Narcissist. they have the, that they know better for everyone else than we know for ourselves. Wow. Did you say so you that ran into we that shouldn't. a lot? When oh, you were, absolutely. Yeah. And and again, like you know, you don't you don't run around and hear people say like I am God no. most of the but time. But we have to change these. But people. you look at their actions and like yes, well they don't know they don't know what's best for them. So we have to make decisions for them. We can't allow them the freedom to make the quote unquote wrong choice because they will hurt not only themselves but they'll destroy democracy. So we're going to take away the freedom that exists in this democracy and we'll make the decision for them, which is what we're seeing play out um, uh, right here and right now. But but also right right alongside that is as I was mentioning like who's who's the the power that these people are afraid of because yes. they are afraid of losing power these politicians are afraid of losing power and yes I, I I am sounding the alarm on how the Democrat elite specifically are doing all they can to undermine our fundamental freedoms which is really what this election is all about that is what is at stake in this election Correct. because if they're allowed to stay in power. 
there is there should be no doubt in anyone's mind. Whatever you think about any candidate, I don't care who, and this is whether it's Biden or whoever. If it's not Biden, it may be Kamala Harris. Whoever it is, they're all the same. They have the same objectives. If they are allowed to stay in power, they will run around this country saying. The voters gave us a mandate to continue the work that we are doing, yes, that's so true. which will escalate this spiral towards a more oppressed, less free, less safe, less secure also uh, an insane society. Idea. Who would yeah. vote and for an that, insane though, idea. So then you look at like, okay, well, who's behind the power? You mentioned George Soros funds all these so-called progressive prosecutors. Um, I believe they tell themselves at night that like when they go to sleep that they're they're doing this for the good of humanity and, you know, those poor people who are victims because of their skin color or their place in society and they need us to rescue them. Um, you have the teachers unions, for example, who only care about power. They don't actually care about the well-being of no. teachers. They certainly don't care about the well-being of our kids, but they so are Randy, part of this. Randy Weingarten and those Yes, people. Randy Weingarten and you, like with the, the American Teachers Federation, I think is She's the one who shut the schools down. American yeah, I mean, Federation. I keep on mixing the, the her ATF up with the other ATF. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's with the American Federation of Teachers, but the you know the NEA is the other big one. I just I just um, uh, somebody gave me a pamphlet from the NEA, the National Education Association, the biggest teachers union in the country. Their 2022 agenda, and this person who gave it to me, she said like take. She said I'm not even going to ask you to take a wild guess on what was number one on their agenda can that I ask? year. Well, no, can I guess? Do it. If you tell me it's gender, I'm going to freak out. It's not. Okay. I could not have guessed it if you gave me 10 tries. So the number one agenda in the teachers' union, you're saying, what, what, what they, what was the, what are you saying? More days off. What's the, what's the more, most important thing that they were pushing forward first over everything else? The, uh, in, in, and I'm paraphrasing, in their words, the plight of Palestine against an oppressive Israel. That's the that's the that was number the number one, one thing Man. they listed on their pamphlet as their priority to Wild. teach kids, not reading, writing, and arithmetic. Exactly, that not, is the not, problem. Not the not teaching them how to think, but what to think. That is the problem. Pushing their think agenda. About that yes, think about. That. And I'm sure DEI was on the list, and I'm sure you know all of these. Uh, this the is the transgender problem. ideology is on the list. All of these things, but but that is the problem. They have so school choice. The right of a parent. I can see you Both get, of you, you guys so are tense. parents. Oh, all of it. It's all depressing to me. <laughs> he gets so You guys, know, I mean, I you guys have young it, kids, right? I, I, don't, I don't know what we well, do. Well, the first thing is vote. identifying the problem. We have to identify the problem. Uh, and I'll, I just want to use this example because it's a great illustration. As parents, you want to have the right to say, you know, as Cody's getting ready to go to school, and I had this conversation with your wife uh, last night, She's like, well, yeah, I, I would. I like the thought of homeschooling, but I, I want to know more about what get, what goes into it and what's going to be best for Cody. Uh, is it a charter school? Is it a private school? Is it a religious school? Is it a public school? Whatever. There, there are many different options out there. Better do your homework. Do your homework. Yes. Uh, but you know, you're about to have another baby. Your your second son may have a very different mentality than Cody does, mm -hmm. and have a different learning style, and all these other things. Parents should have the right to choose what kind of education will best serve their children's learning style and the mm -hmm. things that they're interested yes. in. Um, I was homeschooled all the way through high school. I had a great experience. Oh, damn. And, and share with people like why I loved it, even back at a time when homeschooling was not a popular thing at all. 70, over 75% of Americans across all demographics, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, across all demographics, Democrats and Republicans support school choice you would think that for a politician even one who just puts their finger to the wind Get behind and was that. like hey i want to go with what's popular why Same aren't percent. they freaking stampeding yeah. to stand at their bully pulpit and say school choice let's pass legislation today because the teachers union is too powerful because the teachers union is so powerful they are terrified how do they of how do going they against the teachers power? union and here's what randy weingarten says about school choice it undermines democracy. That's wild. And so if, if you, ergo, support school choice, you are against democracy, my friend. Wow. That makes sense. But this is like, and, and this is an important example to cite because it is so personal to every parent and every family. And you see where and how politicians who are chasing power 
will give up the obvious, even something that's personally well, and selfishly expedient. Yeah. They lose their power because then, then and when, 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 Tulsi, when you say power, like the the teachers union has power, but they're not. They don't provide funding to anybody. Like when you say power, like what kind of power? They fund a lot of politicians' campaigns. Number oh, one, there it is. Number two, they mobilize teachers against candidates. I've seen it uh, in Hawaii, in my home state. I've seen it in other parts of the country. Wow. And Damn, you man. know, when when you're when most of America is sending their children to public schools and handing off their child's well-being to these teachers. And all of a sudden, teachers are mobilizing and saying, like, this person hates teachers and they hate kids and they don't care about their... That's a powerful, powerful. political weapon well, that we've got, they the, the, have to The first wield. thing we've got to do is and they, expose sorry, they the fact that they money. do that. They make money off of the dues that teachers are forced to pay into the teachers' union. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because supposedly... And like, I don't have a problem with unions as, as a construct... They have advocated for and they have helped a lot of people who've just been shit on by really powerful, uh, like multinational corporate for interests. Sure. But but this is an example of, of, and Brian and I were talking about this on the way out here, of like, who is the power elite? Who is the Democrat elite? These are the people. It's not just the elected politicians. It's the funders and it's it's people in the mainstream propaganda media. It's these powerful unions who are no longer serving the interest of, of the people they are claiming to represent. It is about power and holding on to power across the board. Would, would Rachel Maddow or people like that have you on? Have you, have you been on their shows? Long time ago. I, I have not been invited uh, on CNN or MSNBC. They won't even invite you on. They're for too years. They're Probably afraid. not since, uh, not really since my candidacy when I ran for president. And not even like, I, I'm, you know, I, I, have, I have a good relationship with Jake Tapper. I feel like in a lot of examples. He's pretty cool. On CNN, at least, he has been, and it's not. I like him. Not, not all, all of the like. There, there's, there's situations where I feel like he he has shown his bias sometimes, but in others, I've seen how he is one of the lone people on those two networks who isn't afraid to take on a Democrat as as uh, with tough questioning, just like he would a Republican. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's. I think he's got integrity. Yeah, like he's he's a real journalist. Yeah. Whereas Joy Reid or someone like that. Who, who was, you know, Joy Reid was talking about how these people are just voting because they're racist and they don't want anybody over the border. And, and it's like, did it ever occur to you, Joy Reid? Of course it didn't because you're not around real people. But did it ever occur to you that they're voting for their interests? Like they're afraid that mm -hmm. all these people coming over the border unchecked are going to take your jobs yeah. or it just doesn't work? Like is there, borders are not reasonable? Is that what we're talking yeah. about here? That but, rant that she did on that was so wild. horrible. Oh. Wild. She got into this thing like, She's like, you guys are supposed to be pro-life and love children. Well, you must. Do you hate these children just because they're brown? Is that the no, problem? Like, you just want to no, have an all-white society? Is that? No. It just like, her, I, She's so, gaslighting. This is where I, but it's not just gaslighting. I actually think people say, well, these people are smart. They're ambitious. I don't think they're smart. I don't think she's smart. She's certainly not well-read. Yeah. She certainly hasn't exposed herself to other ideas, which is the biggest thing with the left. It's not surprising that people, they've already made up their mind. They're not going to have you there. But, yeah. but at CNN, be like... I don't, those those people are whatever, they're doing their job, they're also paid to push that agenda. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, so if you're going to tune into it, like, you shouldn't yeah. be mad your that audience, pushing. Your audience expects that. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. if I tune into Fox, I know what I'm getting. I tune into CNN, I know yes. what I'm getting. Turn into Comedy Central, I expect comedy. I'm not going to yeah. be mad that they're pushing an agenda yeah. for a paycheck. That's yeah. true. Like, that's her job. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to criticize her, like, don't watch. Your, yeah. your strength, I was telling you, I think your strength is that I, I know you now. I know mm -hmm. you pretty well and spend time with you you're just not that in, you're not an ambitious power hungry human being you're you're I, I know you're not you're you're um you love to surf you love to work out shoot yeah. guns do martial arts yeah. and you like your friends you like just that you like cooking you like doing all these things and then at the same time you feel strongly about certain things and you can't shut your mouth it would have been way easier for you to stay democrat it would have been to total yeah. line if you had done that it would have been way easier not yeah. to ruffle feathers but then you decide to do this other thing. It, it's it's interesting because Brendan, you mentioned like, oh, I checked all the boxes. Every single you box. You know, the, that all, they all the identity politics yes. boxes, and and it's it's not like I've I've never thought of myself in that way. Obviously, that'd be very strange. Uh, but when I won my race for Congress, 
uh, people in Washington, I, I, I've never had any party support in any campaign I've ever run. I served in the state legislature, city council, ran for Congress, um, had the party work against me when I ran for president. But, but after I won my election um, to Congress, uh, you know, the, the, what they saw on the sheet of paper was exactly that. Like, oh, she's 31 years old. She's a woman of color. She's Polynesian. She's a veteran. She's all of these things. Like, this could be really good for us. And so I started getting all kinds of attention that I could certainly didn't um, seek out, but I, I could not, have, I don't think anybody could have predicted it. I was a primetime speaker during the Democratic National Convention that year before I was even a member of Congress. Uh, I spoke about vet veterans issues. I, within two weeks of being in office, I was asked to be vice chair of the DNC. There was a, a vote that was taken that was unanimous because people were told like, hey, she's our pick. Mm. This was pre the beginning of President Obama's second term. Uh, Vogue magazine, my, my press secretary ran into my office. I was there maybe, I don't know, six months, a year. She's like, oh, um, Vogue wants to do like a whole like multi-page spread on you. Wow. And like Annie Leibovitz might like shoot, do your photo shoot. Damn. Damn. And this is this is me. I'm I'm I grew up in Hawaii and I don't I like I don't read Vogue magazine. Yeah. And I was like, No, you don't. Who's Annie Leibovitz? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And my press secretary, she's like, Are you she's big kidding deal. me? Yeah. You don't know this person. And my I was just like, Okay, I'll I, I said I I was very skeptical. I said, I'll think about it. I'm not doing anything in a bikini or a bathing suit. <laughs> like if I have a conversation, it's gonna be about real issues yep. and this whole thing. And they did it and it was it was fine. But uh, there were just so many things like that that were happening that kind of were mind blowing to me. But it, it showed what you just said, Brian, like here is what your life could be like mm -hmm. if you are, if this toe is the, the path that you toe are on, toe the line. And the, the first um, indication or red flag for them that I wasn't going to be that person came pretty quickly I, in August of my first year in Congress, six, seven months there. President Obama announced that he was going to come and seek authorization from Congress to go and launch a, a military attack against Syria, something that would be, you know, he, he didn't market it this way, but it would be essentially the first volley in a, in a longstanding regime change war that, that was waged. And I served on the Foreign Affairs Committee at the time, was in Washington, and I go into detail about how this all went down in the book, but basically came to the conclusion that like the war that I served in in Iraq, these people were coming in wanting to start another war without actually thinking it through, and unable to answer basic questions like, like what is the national uh, security objective we are trying to achieve? How will uh, Syria or like their friends respond to a military attack? They're like, oh, we don't think they'll respond. We just want to deliver a message. We want to deliver a punch in the gut. We don't think they'll respond. I was like, okay, you don't think so, but what if they do? What if they do? And what if, they, maybe it's not a response to us. Maybe they're not going to hit a U.S. military target. What if they respond to one of our friends mm -hmm. who's then going to call us and being like, yo, you got to back us up on this. They're doing this to us because of you. You, you got you to war game all these things out. And Otherwise, you find yourself in a mess like we found ourselves in in Iraq. Long story short, I came out against the president's request um, and gave very detailed reasons why immediately heard from the white house, like within 24 hours. And it wasn't like, Hey, let's talk about this. I know you're a veteran of, of two middle East deployments. I understand your experience. Like there was none, there was no substantive conversation. It was how dare you go against your president? Oof. Just how, like that. how dare you go against you're a freshman Democrat in Congress. Who do you think you are? You're, you, you come from the president's home state in Hawaii, the state where he was born. Who do you think you are to, to go against the team? Now, did you hear from your fundraisers? What yeah, is that, is that done in person or are you on that like a, a group call. text thread? Phone call. Oh, no, that was a direct phone call. I was on Savage. a train going, I was like on the freaking Amtrak from New York back to D.C., with the threat of you're not going to get reelected, basically, right? You're, you're going to piss there, people there's off. There's implied, there's implied uh, consequences when you get a phone call like that. And I bet you're not getting the invite to, you know, some of the dinners. Like you're, exactly. You're just not the cool kid in class exactly. anymore. Exactly. And and Side in out. Washington, like it is here in LA, I'm sure there's there's currency. Yeah. 
Yeah, like we're those out. are those are leverage yeah. points yeah. that are used. You're right. You're one of the cool kids. You put on ice. Yeah, you put on ice. Right. What happened? Right. You got to go up to Siberia for a while. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy mushing those dogs. Right. Yeah. Enjoy no one's answering it. your calls or texts anymore. It's, yeah. You know when Henry Kissinger watched, um, he was uh, he was uh, uh, Richard Nixon's Secretary of State and and uh, just a great statesman, but also a very controversial figure. And he watched The Godfather. They, they had a private screening of The Godfather. Uh, and Robert Evans said that Henry Kissinger just looked at him and said, just like Washington, just the names are different. Same. <laughs> yeah, just, like there's that saying in Washington, if you want a friend, buy a fucking dog. Yeah. yeah. But Tulsi, with you going independent, this yeah. is my, and I've, I've always, uh, like when it comes to politics, I'm a white belt, blue belt at best. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand, when you go independent, like your chances of winning is not good, right? When you're independent, because either it's it's the left, it's, it's very the right. very hard, and it's intentionally so. In they've, history, they've rigged it. Both parties, there are certain things both parties come together around, even yeah. in this hyper partisan environment that we are in. Yep. One is war, the other is power, and so yes, after um, Ross Perot was like ahead of Bill Clinton in the polls, yeah. running for president they make at that sure time, they like suppress you. They, guys they make... literally came together and made it much more difficult for a third party candidate to gain access to just being on the ballot. So when you decide to go independent, like you know, like it's an like historically, like you're probably very, not going to very, very win. challenging. And independent hasn't won in a hundred years. That's very what I'm saying. So you know, yeah. like you're you're it's a one in a million shot. You're yeah. already fighting the odds. Yeah. And then when I see. Like certain candidates, you know they're not going to win, but they continue to do their thing, and it costs millions and millions of dollars. I don't get why they just don't pull out. Like mm. I'm sure they have the figures and the numbers, and it, how does someone go? Hey, this you're not going to win. Yeah, but they still do it. Um, I don't understand. I, there, there's a few different, um, I guess, mindsets or different approaches for why that is. Some people run just because they want a platform. They know they're not going to win. Uh, and and they are able to get support from people who maybe share their beliefs or views and want them to have that platform to advocate for those points. Um, others run uh, and stay in because they they really truly believe that they can win, even if the the data or the press the precedent doesn't necessarily prove that to be true. Um, you know, change is possible. Change By the way, people run also because they country. know that the next four years. That's true. So you, you put and your that's stake in the ground. You, become, yeah. or you can see party. that a you lot. Some momentum. Of they're yeah. setting it up. Biden they're like that. planting the seed yeah. for the future. Yeah. But, but, I, but I guess, and can, tell me if I'm way yeah. off on this. When I see you go independent or like RFK, yeah. you know, who's independent, getting a lot of votes, and the left and right both hate it because you're stealing votes from them, sure. right? So in my mind, when I heard you going independent, I'm like, oh, I wonder if she's doing that. Because then, if Trump wins, maybe you're the VP, or if RFK Ooh. won, you'd be VP. Like, Frankly, maybe that's like, the move. You'd be a good not, VP for Trump. I'm not that calculating. I'm no. really not that calculating. Um, you know, would you and, be and open this to is, it though? This is. I, I would certainly be open to it, and and here's why. Um, I've always been an independent-minded person. I've always struggled with labels, and it's been something that even those who um, you know, have supported me politically, have told me like, dude, you don't fit cleanly in this Democrat box because you're not willing to like follow along and play ball there. You don't fit cleanly into this Republican box because you're not really like going to play ball with the way they want it. And so what are you going to do? Like what, where do What's you- your brand? What, right. And, and it's, I, I've made every decision that I've made in, in politics- um, and just I, it's what I try to do with my life is just do your best to to make the decision because it's the right thing to it's do. The right thing and to the do chips for the country. Fall where they fall. Even, if, back to this even it's when like the every love of country. exactly, you know, even when every, you know, I, I endorsed Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton, for example, in 2016. God bless. I resigned as vice chair of the DNC in order to do that because of one issue. Hillary Clinton was being touted as the most uh, qualified person ever to run for president in our nation's history in that election. Over and over Wild. and over again. You turn on any news channel other than Fox News, that's all you heard. The most qualified person ever to run for president in history. And yet there was no accountability or even questions about like, okay, you've got all these titles, Secretary of State, U.S. Senator, First Lady, all this stuff. What did you do? What would you say you what do? What was your record? Yeah. 
What was the concept? Like, you want to be the commander in chief of our armed forces. What kind of foreign policy have you led with? And and no one in the media did that for obvious reasons because yeah. her track record is horrific. Yeah. She Awful. is the queen of warmongers yes. in that uniparty of Democrats and Republicans in Washington. She is that person. And and I just I as a as an American and as a veteran, as a soldier serving and then the National Guard and other reserve, I felt a sense of duty and responsibility to use whatever influence I had to shine a light on exactly that. So at least voters could make an informed choice where you've got Hillary Clinton who has a very clear track record on, you know, toppling dictators and starting wars in countries where we shouldn't be going to war, things that are actually counter to our interests. And you have Bernie Sanders on foreign policy who doesn't have that, who didn't have that breadth of experience, but at least his instinct was, was more non-intervention. Mm -hmm. His instinct was not more guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The, but the, but here, here's, here's my point is when I made that decision, every one of my colleagues in Congress, this was 2016, I, was, I served for eight years, this was four years in, uh, I, went, I announced it on a Sunday on Meet the Press, showed up to work on Monday, and almost to a person, even my closest friends were like, you just committed political suicide. Damn. Hillary you ate Clinton. lunch by yourself. I'm that not joking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want any pictures no, no. taken with me. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. you're saying when you, when you left, what, what, when I re it, and it wasn't, Hillary, it wasn't because I resigned as vice chair of the DNC. It was because I freaking spoke up, launched a war against Hillary Clinton in that, in that election. Damn. And they yeah. told me she's going to be president, Tulsi. You're in Congress. It doesn't matter that you're a Democrat. You will not get a penny for your constituents at home. It doesn't matter how good the project is. Politics, bro. You will not get a free Damn, penny. It's like I mean, the you, mafia. you are on the shit list, no, the and there is, is a more. real shit list that exists. And You're this guy it. in particular who told me this, he's like, trust me, I'm telling you because I was on it, because <laughs> he was an early supporter of Obama in 08 when he was running against Hillary. And there was Damn. a huge, there is, there is no love lost between those two camps. I bet that was there a hard-fought primary, oh, yeah, yeah. and he picked Obama early on, before he was popular, and he said, this guy, member of Congress, told me it took him years to work his way off the Clinton shit list. Jeez, and yeah. so they were just like, Lucky then, via con Dios, my friend, wow. good luck. Wow. <laughs> Let's take a little break, B, little from break. just chatting. I'm stressed Chad, with Tulsi, Tulsi, man. Tulsi, Gabbard, so awesome. Uh, look, when you've got problems and you have a, you have an auto part you want to replace, you know how expensive it is? If you're a guy like me and you're ignorant to it, you don't have the tools for it, so maybe you want to do it yourself. Maybe you want to be able to get a tool, rent a tool. You want somebody to loan you a tool. That you're, only gonna lose, you're only going to use it once. Right. What about windshield wipers, which I always... I always seem to need. Let my friends at O'Reilly Auto Parts help you out so that that special thing you got to do for your car and you need a tool that you only use once, cool. They have the loaner tool program. Simply pay a refundable deposit, borrow the right tool, do the job on your ride, then you get your deposit back when it's returned. Whatever you need, whether you're a car expert or a rookie, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, best of all, super friendly. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself. You can find what you need in-store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash fighter. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash fighter. O -O -O O'Reilly. Hey, you're probably wondering what I'm wearing underneath here. Oh, true classic, of course. Of course. It's all we rock, my That's man. That's all we rock. That's all we rock, my underwear. True classic. Look, you guys, all shirts, all true classic shirts are made to accentuate the places that the eyes go first. Tighter arms, tighter in the arms and chest but with the perfect amount of room in the midsection. And they okay. make the best shirts of all time. You know this if you order merch from me, Fighting Kid, it's all true classic. They have two or three packs, but you guys know the shirts, but they're just not shirts. They have crew neck sweatshirts. You see me and Brian Sweaters, Rock. They got jeans, joggers, jeans, Oxford button ups, button -ups and they're fantastic. Yeah. They got it all. It's the one-stop shop to help you guys look great. They've helped over 2 million men look great. Get 25% off when you shop now. 25% I'll try trueclassic.com slash fighter. Give it a shot. I promise you will never wear another t-shirt again. If you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now. Go to trueclassic.com slash fighter. Save up to 25% off your first order. And uh, and you can't go wrong. Make 2024 your most comfortable year yet. Trueclassic.com slash fighter.
I so, mean, you, you play the dirtiest game. Like, politics is by far the dirtiest game in town. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I was time. a UFC fighter. Yeah, I know, so that's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> politics is as dirty as it gets, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, so I've, to, to your original question of like, why go independent? Uh, Knowing the you know, history, clearly I years. left. It, it was not. It's not. It was not, and is not a politically calculated maneuvering. First here, it's not a chess move for me. It it was a conscious decision to leave the Democratic Party. I go into all the reasons of why in this book that fundamentally lead to how can I be aligned with a party that is actively undermining our freedom and is actively pushing us closer to the brink of nuclear catastrophe Correct. and World War III. The Republican Party is in a state of, I would say, identity crisis also mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, I, I was at a dinner in New York City a couple of weeks ago, and there was a room of a lot of influential conservatives and Republicans and this woman was very skeptical about me because she's like, look, you've been like, why, why should I believe you? Why should I trust you? And, and the culmination of this was her in a, a respectful but kind of an aggressive way. She's like, but will you stand with Republicans? And I just told her, I was like, well, what Republicans are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, like, man. I'm not going to stand with Liz Cheney. No. She is a warmonger with the likes of Nikki Haley and Correct. Hillary Clinton and Mitt Romney. Like she's, she is part of that that She's the class mm -hmm. of warmongers like you know there there are republicans who i agree with others i disagree same, with same and this is this is where um my intentional use of permanent washington the power elite uh i don't think that any american should be a blind follower of any political group that's not american it's right? not no. you got to be responsive to the evidence what's working yes. but when you i want to know like it's obvious that there is a ring of very powerful elite people yeah. who control a lot of politics because yeah. that's real pressure. Yeah, when and they're behind the scenes, right? Yeah. They're like this the, weird. Yeah, they call them the, the operatives, the political operatives, the ones have you the have to deal with them. Oh yeah, yeah, the ones who really? call you oh, and yeah. say, "Hey, you're." And how do up. they reach out to you? <laughs> it's so wild. It's not like as it's, it's wild, not as right? like cuz I feel like in the movies but also in your imagination runs away you think of like the old school you think of like the dudes like in an the invisible dark star room chamber with the cigar and, smoke yeah. in the air and like, like all they all get stuff. together it's like this dark lounge yeah. no. they yeah. like zoom you in Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't uh, well first of all I've never been invited in those rooms <laughs> Yeah I just I've experienced A the band there with masks yeah, right. <laughs> naked yeah But it's things like um you know, I want, I've been on The View a few times. Did you see her on The View? When no. she came after Joy Behar? <laughs> no, oh, God dude. bless you. Oh, Joy Behar. <laughs> no. Joy Behar called her a useful idiot? When, so, I, when I wasn't to on your the face? Show. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Oh. That's my face. So, so, Which Tulsi is a problem. Gets, oh, yes. Tulsi gets on and she goes, yes, we'll get to. She goes, tell us about the volcanoes in Hawaii. <laughs> and Tulsi goes, Tulsi goes, oh, we'll get to them. They're important. But I'd like to just address a couple things about who I am <laughs> since you called me a useful idiot. Well, we didn't call you. We said you're useful. He said, no, you called me a useful idiot. Whoa. I'm a woman of color. I'm an intelligent. I'm a veteran. And I love my country. They had Let's nothing. They had wouldn't nothing. let her off. Joy Behar's like, hold on, hold on. She's a disaster. Like, like, <laughs> like four months later, she was still fuming. Yeah, she's not been invited back. Yeah, of course. I mean, no, yeah. So you, Megan, you, Megan McCain, so Megan McCain, who's a good friend of mine, she was on the show at the time. She was one of one oh, of the right. co-hosts, and uh, she told me. And this was before we were really friends. First of all, Megan was giddy to see Joy Behar being uh, destroyed Call like that. that. Yeah. After, literally, as soon as they went to commercial break, Megan like ran like towards backstage and she was jumping up and down. I love it. I love it. Because <laughs> they've been torturing her for so long. But before any of, like before Megan and I were friends, we had just been introduced by mutual friend Megan. She's like, she attacked me politically, publicly before. I wasn't a big fan of hers because of that. A mutual friend of ours who knew us both fairly well said, you know, I think you guys would actually get along. You guys should just go have lunch. And so we're like, okay, let's do it. We went and had lunch hit it off immediately, have been best friends ever since. That's cool. But she called me and she was like, hey, um, I, I'd just been on the show and she said this, this weird thing happened where all of the, like there were specific words and verbiage that every one of the other co-hosts were using when they were referring to me or talking about me. 
And Megan was looking through her blue cards because they have producers who come in, you know, for they sure. brief you on the topics and you get the notes and everything else for each one. But Megan was like, this is the first time I've ever seen a situation where every other co-host on the show is using the exact same words about Weird. you, almost like they got me a memo and talking Damn. points in advance. And wow. they did. And Megan's and been in this did. business for a long time. Hot second, yeah. And she was really kind of shaken by this. It's scary. And so there's so many different examples. So there of are, like, there is an elite that there is a behind there the scenes are, of course, group of people. Of course. Remember when Chuck Schumer- And once they set your sights on you- You're screwed. Well, they do, they will do their damnedest. Do you remember Chuck Schumer? Remember when he said, he said, well, all I know is that, you know, Donald Trump is taking on the intelligence community. Yeah. And there are, they have six ways to Sunday to get yep. back at you. Yep. And I went. And how I stupid like, Donald Trump is to take them on. I had somebody else say that in who was, who was government, uh, you know, who knows better, who's been, yeah. and said, I remember when they said, he's, he's doing this. And he's like, and she, she, this woman said, she goes, I mean, I just all I know is that they can, they have ways of making still your life it. difficult. He's oh, still he doing he's it. He's the Teflon Don. He's, yeah. he's still you see doing what he said it. this last thing? He goes, oh, what kind of collateral are you going to put up? For the, for the New York bond. <laughs> Gangster cash. <laughs> and the, 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 the guy who asked the question goes, oh. Yeah. Cash. <laughs> Swats off. Yeah. Gangster. <laughs> Gangster shit. <laughs> totally. Gangster. <laughs> that, and that's you why, met him, that's right? why, yeah, I've met him a few times. What's, what was that's that That's why like? they're trying to destroy him. Yes. Oh, yeah. That right. is why they're trying to destroy him. Do you think they're going to succeed? Because he doesn't care. Do you think they succeed? They're not trying he, their game. Wins. I, not he wins. He I don't, win I don't know. I don't know. And and this is this was the reason why I was surprised that he won in 2016 because of that. Because I knew how powerful the Clinton machine was and so is. And I thought even though I saw and heard from even Democrats in the middle of the country saying, like, I've been a Democrat my whole life. I'm voting for Trump because even if the only thing he does is like uh, figuratively blows that whole place up to that's pieces, what that's what we need in order to rebuild a government of by and for the people. Mm -hmm. I was surprised he won because I thought that the Clinton machine would figure out a way to win. I mean, eventually they did, right? The, yes. yes, and and they, they essentially like launched this years-long soft coup to try to undermine his entire presidency. By bringing in big tech, by bringing yes. in journalism. Yes. And the national security corporate. state, yes. and law enforcement, and the Department of Justice, Man, which obviously powerful. all of that is still happening today. Yes. So my hope is that as this has gone on, uh, more and more Americans have their eyes open to these powerful dark forces and why they're trying to destroy him. They do, right? And because make sure that we show up and vote yes. against those dark but forces. To your point, but that's why I think it was good during the, the midterms. Like we're like anyone who's read was like, oh, this is a landslide. The Republicans are going to crush the midterms. But they didn't. We just. I think they just assumed, and then you go out and vote. Then they go their exactly way. What happened. But I think it's a good sign if you're. If you're on the right, it's a good sign because, all right, learn. The midterms didn't go how yeah. you thought. Now in the real election, you got to get out and vote. That, that's, I, I just, think it was the best thing to happen. It concerns me. every, And I hear this from both influential Republicans who are on TV as well as, you know, people who are in like their little local county party or whatever. They're like, oh, we got this. He's going to win this hands down. I'm like, no, no. This election will not be decided until that last That's vote right. is cast. Yeah. A huge And liability. watch carefully every step of the way. Yeah. A big part of why they lost the midterms that nobody thought, I, I could see, see this, was the Abortion. overturning of Ro Roe v. Wade, and it became a state issue. They didn't realize how that yeah. was going to There are a lot them. of people, especially women, who are like, you're not doing this to me. Well, I think it's that, but then also just assuming we got this in the bag. Yeah. I think a lot of yeah. people can get out and vote. I can't But it's a good thing it happened during midterms and yeah. doesn't happen when the real election comes along. Yeah. I campaigned for a lot of different candidates in, uh, it was funny because the day I announced, or the day after I announced I left the Democratic Party, my phone started ringing off the hook from candidates in congressional races, gubernatorial races, Senate races, who recognized like, hey, she's a former Democrat, now a political independent. Who are, who are the people who generally decide these elections? Independents. Independents. Swing states. Independents. Correct. Disaffected Democrats. Michigan. People like frustrated that. with both political parties. Yep. And so the I spent- Politically homeless, right? Right. And so I spent the next five weeks uh, up until election day. I think I was in like 22 different states over that period of time and, and campaigned with different candidates who had their voters identified. They had a voter um, 
you know, turnout operation on election day, huge chunks of voters, thousands of voters just didn't actually show up. It wasn't because they disagreed, they didn't care, they were pissed off, there was a scandal, none of they it. They just didn't do it. They just was like, ah, they got it. Yep. God. And that's a danger. It's. But hopefully they learn. And then I really hope so. Me too. Yeah, I a really lot of weird things so. when it rains and there's a low voter turnout, yeah. I think that's good for Republicans. Uh, when it when it's a, real, a nice day, it's bad for good, bad for Republicans because more people vote. I, don't, I, I can't remember how. But the Democrats are doing, and the Biden administration doing their damnness just to open the borders so you can get the legal immigrants just mail in ballots. Yeah. That's how they want. Well, they, there's all kinds of. That's the strangest thing to me. How people. Well, and they see they see how uh, they see that you know illegal immigrants or people who are ethnic minorities they should be Democrat voters. Uh, and so there's no doubt in my mind that that is part of their calculus. Hundred percent. In but well, this is my thing, Tulsi. Like, like if, if you're America first, like uh, obviously I believe in immigration stuff like that. But if you're American first, the downside to that is you're allowing millions and millions of illegal immigrants. Not all those people are here for the American dream. You're allowing a lot of really dangerous people yeah. in. We saw what just happened in Russia, and all these all these people that we can't we don't have documentation. You just lend them in. You know, a lot of them are Chinese. There's and people th when they think of border, they think Mexicans. Mexicans mm -hmm. aren't coming here. The majority of them are not Mexican, yeah. and the American public doesn't realize that. You're allowing all sorts of people and yeah. terrorists, everybody. Yep. And if you're if you're the Biden cabinet and your idea is just to get that mail in ballot, well, at what cost? Well, they're not allowed you're, to you're, vote. You're actually. allowing so some terrorist in there. Well, yeah. illegal no. aliens are not allowed to vote technically, right? But but what it is is right now there's you can claim asylum and then you get a court date and you're just sent into the interior correct which is which the like, court date is usually years yes mm -hmm. away yes yes there is no way to keep track of you or yeah. who you are or where you're there's going no there's no way to hold you accountable if you don't show up the tricky thing is that a lot of those immigrants are actually absorbed pretty well because what happens is there are a lot of jobs like in, in harvesting for agriculture and stuff like that that they are used for. So a lot of them actually come here and find work. Um, and But the, the larger, my thing is always, look, you have a lot of people waiting in line trying to do this the legal way. I'm all for immigration, legal immigration. Yeah. That's why you have to frame the narrative properly. I'm not against immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. Yes. You're breaking the law. Yes. And don't tell me you're all seeking asylum. The, you know, the, this, is, this is another example of where I have a problem with the woke world. Why in the world are, if you're so... If you're so, if you hate the West so much, please explain to me why everybody is coming to the West. Why is that? Is there, are they do? Are we doing something right with our values? Mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's that's the other things, and that jives with what you were saying. Like they don't make sense to me. I think there's um, a dangerous shift in mentality, and and there isn't there is a very clear national security threat because of this open border policy. As you mentioned, there's people coming from Somalia, people coming from across different countries in the Middle East where there are known terror islamist terrorist strongholds people coming from all over the world millions people of Chinese. who are dressed yeah. in like you know freaking gucci coats and like a ramoa yeah thousand dollar suitcase flying into tijuana and then coming across the border here in california that's crazy and and disappearing immediately into a neighborhood or just going straight to the airport and getting on a plane nothing <laughs> done finished um there there's the national security threat but uh, I, I was talking with a friend this morning about the shift in mindset. So you look at, you know, uh, maybe your parents or their parents' generation who came through Ellis Island. And these immigrants came from different parts of the world. They got here and they, they like, they were the heartbeat of what we know New York City to be Correct. now from all over the place. And they were coming here for, to, to truly seek that opportunity. And they came through a legal process to do so. You look at the mindset now, and I forget if it was Seattle or Portland recently I saw where a city council meeting was completely shut down. They had to call in the cops because hundreds of illegal immigrants were protesting, holding signs, screaming, yelling, and bullhorns because they wanted better. They were already being put up in hotels, already getting a food stipend, already getting cash. They wanted to be put up in better living conditions because uh, what they were given wasn't good enough. They wanted more money. This sense of entitlement. Wild. That you break our laws by coming in our country illegally. You demand a whole bunch of free shit. That's so crazy. I while can't we have it. homeless people and homeless veterans like 
American Americans, citizens on and our here. streets, born and raised here, and you you clearly don't respect the rule of law. So you're not even coming here saying, man, I really hope and pray great that point. one day I can be a great American citizen and salute this flag and all of the values and principles. And then you add on that, this Obama appointed judge that says illegal immigrants can carry firearms in America wow. when those That's very so same crazy. people are trying to disarm law-abiding Americans so across the country. And oh, by the way, you're an illegal immigrant. Maybe you have a border patrol agent or a, you know, an ICE agent or, or local law enforcement that comes at you. And in the best of all scenarios, maybe you're a guy who, you know, you've got your little kids, you've got your wife. Maybe you don't speak English very well and you don't like everything seems like a threat to you because you're in a foreign place. What's to stop you from taking that firearm and using it against one of our law enforcement officers because you're trying to protect your family? What to speak of actually those who are here to go out and commit crimes, part of cartels? Like there's so many scenarios where this situation that we are facing is a true national crisis. So why are they doing it? And the it, Biden though, administration is doing worse than dropping the ball. Like initially is like, man, there he's really failing. Yes. The fact that he Kamala is, Harris didn't even go down to the border. She doesn't go they don't go down to the border, and when they do, it's freaking all cleaned up and made beautiful. Right, because otherwise you'll bring cameras and you'll see what's And they are see. bringing cameras. Did you see but, her in Puerto Rico? No. I, I saw these protests <laughs> they were protesters and they're singing a chant, but in you know, Spanish, making fun of her, and she walks down, she's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see the translator's like, No, they're actually saying you suck. And she goes, Oh, and she stops clapping. <laughs> They're protesters. She's it's just, true. It's such a it's bummer. True. She just can't She's, win. Yeah, no, she can't win. She but wouldn't look, win her you, own state. You would know this, Tulsi. Like, clearly, I mean, Biden says he's going to run. I mean, it's not happening. No, you know, it's, he's not. It's, he's not the guy. So, if you're the Democratic Party, who is it? Like, they're going to have to, at the last second, pull in somebody. For the Democrats to, so is it? It would have to be like a Newsom. I we hear Oprah. We hear Obama. They, they can't he's compromised and then they go well he's not going to debate because obviously he's mentally you know challenged when that, it comes that, that i think is true i don't think i i would be shocked if there are presidential debates this year how wild is that it's it's, it's what you guys wild. do yeah you know you got to debate so we can see what you what topics you believe in and so debate right. it against this guy yeah. so the best idea wins yeah that's the way we pick presidents so when you say there's no debate it's like but that's your politicians yeah that's how you win us over yeah, yeah. if you're not going to do it we can't vote off for Biden based off his laws right. and his policies. Record? No, you, <laughs> yeah. so it's so they're going to have to come up with something. Yeah, at the I, last I second. I mean, I honestly, there's nobody knows. Nobody knows. Really, even I feel like people, you'd have a better lead than most even of the us. most even the most powerful people in the Democratic Party in Washington. I have an idea of, of what they would like to do, maybe. What do you think? Or what? The, well, you know, Newsom. All, all of the signs Karen. are there. Uh, through through what's being leaked and what's being said in broad daylight about how they they don't really want Biden to be the many of them don't right. want Biden to be the candidate yep. for obvious reasons because they think he'll lose to Trump. They're right? they're starting to see that and getting quite scared. But yep. the reason why they supported him in the first place was because they thought, hey, he's done it before. He's the only guy who can do it again. Um, I don't. I have a hard time seeing Biden willingly step aside. He is a very well. Father very, Time would take care of that. I mean, he, he has maybe, two maybe years not. Max, I don't right? know. How old Who is knows? he now? Is Who he eighty two? He'll be eighty. It's so wild. Like is, this though, is and our this is, and, and I. Th 81. This is becoming a, a recurring conversation. Um, it does like I. I think it would be hard for them if he does step aside. I think it would be hard for them to put anyone up other than Kamala Harris as the vice president, <laughs> as as a Good woman luck. of color. It would, it, I think. But her her approval rating is like the lowest of all time for a vice president. I don't, right, but it goes even black people don't like her. whole freaking gender, uh, you know, identity politics. Yeah. Like they, they painted themselves in a they corner. Have. Let me give you another example. But let me, I just, yeah. this is an important point. It doesn't matter. Mm. Wow. It doesn't matter who they put forward. Powerful. If you look at the policies that they have been pushing, uh, you know, people are like, well, who's who's really making the decisions? Who's setting the agenda for the White House if it's not Joe Biden? You have his national security lead is um, was Hillary Clinton's guy. His domestic policy lead was Obama's person, 
both very, very among, you know, like the top four or five staffers in both of those political teams. You have Hillary saying she talks to the White House almost every day. You've got Obama saying like, oh man, like I think someone asked, this is a little while ago when they said, oh, you know, do you still, do you want to be president again? And he's like, my dream would be to be able to sit in my house on the couch in my sweatpants and run the White House from there it's or run the country from there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. the, the point is we can't be distracted. There are so many um, like information operations and distraction tactics that are being used against us voters in this election. It doesn't matter who else they put up. If they put someone else or whatever fancy dressing they may put on this, it's the same people running the same show and they will take what they have been doing over these last three and a half years and if given the chance, they will amp it up and make it far worse. But yeah, but Tulsi, who, my my question for like just the American public: Who in their right mind would continue to vote for that? People it's who not are going people well. who people. are infected with the Trump derangement syndrome, and are a lot un, of a, a, otherwise reasonable, logical, successful, intelligent people cannot see past. Uh, this it, and and it is it like be, well, their you thought heard, process. You've, you've is heard very not, powerful, very smart people, very influential people say, by any means necessary, yes. even illegal means, yes. we want to get Trump out of there. Like yes. I know. real powerful people. Yes, I know. and that's that's, that's that, that. It's at the cost of the American public, though. They don't care. They just want to stay in power. Yeah, democracy. And yes. You're going to have terrorist attacks coming up. Yes. Inflation. But it's not even crime. This, yeah. is, this is an ideological struggle, right? And and it, it does come. I'm down. exhausted. Um, yeah. It, it's it's so exhausting. It's a lot. Because I, I feel mean, like we can't do anything. But this you is can. this is that's wrong. This is where. Really? This is where. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can do it. I feel like we can't do. I know. And this is. I think how powerful you are. Like think about all the 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 influence you have. Yeah. And even you left the Democratic Party and you're independent. Yeah. Independent has won a hundred years. Yeah. It's like if, if you can't make the change, you know what well, I'm saying? Well, here, here's the thing: is is we got number one, we got to get past like the the party labels first mm -hmm. of all. Because I'm not sitting, I, and I wouldn't ever, just like I, the, the Democrats had the vote blue no matter who slogan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Republicans have their own version of that, but I think that mentality is dangerous. Agree. So I'm not sitting here saying like, hey, whoever you are, wherever you are, just vote Republican because Democrats are bad. There's some very, very sinister Republican politicians as well who oh, yeah. also don't care about the country. The answer to what do we do um, lies within the vision and the founding documents that our country's founders laid out for us. Visionary, timeless leaders who recognize, because of our, our collective history, how democracy is fragile and how in the event that there is someone in a position of power, regardless of party, that tries to undermine our freedoms in their tyrannical pursuit of more power, we have a system in place, as imperfect as it is, we have a system in place where we the people still get to decide who gets, who governs us. Mm -hmm. These literal words are in the Declaration of Independence. Um, but when those founding fathers made that document, they didn't really realize AI was coming. They didn't realize that's the, the mid manipulation of social media is coming because i know some very smart people you're like how did you what yeah you what do you how'd you end up there and then you yeah. realize that they're being manipulated through social media yeah. and ai and all this stuff but, but here's what they did realize principles. The, and that the, those principles here's what they did we realize. can sway because, those principles you know you you've got you've got both democrats and republicans um talking about this whole you know misinformation disinformation yeah like i i don't deny that it's real but the problem is you have like the Biden administration trying to create this disinformation governance board where someone in his administration is the person or the board of five people, whatever decides. it was, who gets to decide what is information, disinformation. And if it's disinformation, you don't get to speak. And that's where our founders were so freaking brilliant in, in, in putting within the First Amendment free speech, freedom of expression. Not you only get to speak if you speak the truth. Not only you get to speak if you say things that are nice and don't offend anybody. Not you get to, to speak freely if your party is in power. They, they wrote these words as a, as a reminder and to set the guardrails of power 
within our federal government. Unfortunately, we the people have allowed people to abuse that power and take away our liberties and freedoms, uh, oftentimes in the name of national security, oftentimes in the name of a national emergency or a crisis, and in the name of like, well, this is what's best for you. Well, that's the Trojan horse, right? It is. They the say, Trojan oh, horse. if you don't do this, this could happen. It's bad, right. but it's just a Trojan horse to make, change put them and manipulate. To grab yes. onto more power. So the answer to what do we do yes. in this election specifically understand that the first step is identifying the problem and i'm very explicit in my book in pointing out uh the the insidious uh effect of the democrat elite elected unelected mainstream media across the board uh how they are directly undermining our freedom so at a minimum we have to stop the bleeding because right now we have like this uh, gushing open chest wound that's only getting worse and worse. And if we don't stop the bleeding, we die. How would you stop the bleeding? Throwing them out of power. Mm. Throwing them out of power. Use your discernment as we go through these next several months in this election uh, to, to gather more information and, and think about how you want to vote. But at a minimum, I am sounding the alarm for everyone. Know the truth about what these people are doing and undermining our freedom uh, and how they are making our country less safe, less secure, less at peace, yep. and less prosperous as a result. And then go and make your decision from there. Tulsi Gabbard, for love of country. I love it. Leave the Democratic <laughs> Party behind. Wow. You're, you're such a, um, I just love uh, listening to you talk and you, you make me feel like I, I have some hope for politics in the future. So. Uh, you know, you got it. You got our vote. <laughs> yeah, you got. You've had my vote. I just feel like yeah, it doesn't you went matter. Public, for me. You went hard in the paint. It was great. Yeah. It comes down to I think something that that is 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 fundamentally American, but that is not spoken about often enough, and that is uh, taking individual ownership and responsibility, both for our actions, but also for the role that the responsibility that we have as citizens to take ownership for what's happening in our country. And I think you do that by educating yourself yes, on the matters it's where- essential. Yeah, because if you just watch CNN and you watch Fox, yeah. no, no, that's just a commercial for the left and the right. Yeah. You don't want a commercial. Yeah. You, need the, you need to find out like the under, what's going on, exactly going on. So it's like when Biden came out and no matter how you feel about electric cars, I don't like them, I hate them, but take that out of it. I, I'm a big car guy, I like combustion motors for a million reasons over electric. So when Biden comes on and says, by 2030, I'm banning all sales of uh, combustion motors and you have to do all electric. If you just know a few things about the power grid, you go, that's Especially not realistic. Here, here <laughs> Texas, everywhere. Yeah. The, like just, if you are an electric fan, you just should know like the, the power grid's not set up for that. Yeah. It's literally impossible to do that by 2030. So you know that's just gaslighting. That's not that's not realistic. Yeah. It sounds good, but it's, it's it's not real. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, there. There's. We have to educate ourselves. We have to be informed voters. This is our responsibility. And it's like there's so many people who are like, oh, I'm not. I don't like politics. I hate getting involved with politics. <laughs> if you care about yourself, if you care about your children, if you care about, you know, your ability to. Uh, I don't know, have a good paying job and be able to afford the most basic things in your life. If you care about having good infrastructure, I mean, you, you look at all like, of it can be taken things, away from you. All of it. All of it can be taken. If you, if you care about, you know, being able to have a conversation like this, um, oh, we'll be, this, we'll this be is, demonetized on YouTube for this. This, this is, this is, uh, Sorry, not sorry for that. No, no, <laughs> we, we, yeah. it's my life. It's just what I yeah. deal with. There's no, again, there's no way to fight that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but no, but not. that's really where um, you know that, and it is where I find hope. Sincerely, it's where I find a lot of inspiration. Is I know there are, there are many more Americans in this country who really do love our country, but who feel frustrated and who feel hopeless. It's about reminding each other and ourselves of who we are, the power that exists in our hands because of this system of governance that we have, and the, the responsibility that goes with that power. And just to your point about getting educated, uh, we shouldn't be afraid of having conversations and dialogue with people who disagree with us. 
Um, I oh, listen to podcasts. You mean like podcasts, a presidential debate? <laughs> like a presidential debate, but even... <laughs> that they're not going to do. Even in your family, though. Yep. You know, like oh, I, I have a member of my family who disconnected herself from my family because of politics, political Same. disagreements. That's Same. the problem. They walk away. Same. You don't get invited to uh, on these shows. Exactly. Anymore. Exactly. But but also like I listen to podcasts where people are saying things I don't agree with, but I'm really curious about the questions we're asking like why do you support open borders? I really want to know your thought process. And like yeah. I will learn something new and it'll strengthen my arguments and counter arguments. There are other issues that have come up that I just, I, I maybe have a, a basic understanding of a feeling of, of where I stand on that issue. But the more I learn about it, the more I um, am able to ask the tough questions, both of myself as well as with others, so that my position doesn't fit within a box necessarily, but it's one that I know I can stand by because I've done the work. Yeah, yeah and, the right and, and there's nothing wrong with sometimes having your mind changed or exactly. changing someone else's mind. Exactly. You can't, you can't, you're, I got to get you out of here, by the way. <laughs> Are we running late? <laughs> yeah, she's got another, you've got an hour and a half to drive. I know, it's I okay. It's okay for a little bit late. It's fine. Yeah. But, uh, but that's it. I mean, we always forget that you, the way you learn is by having your mind changed. And you can't have your mind changed unless you're, somebody pushes against you. Yeah. Where you talk to somebody who has a different point of view. But we have a society today where it's like, you know, you hurt their feelings. They don't have these conversations. Yeah. Well, they don't even want to talk to you, though. There, there is a thing about the left, I think, that, that's different than the right, which is I've noticed with the, with the progressive far left, people like AOC will not engage with you. They will walk away. It's yeah. a policy. The policy is to actually walk away from you. Walk away. Right. Walk away. They say that stuff. Right. They won't engage with you because they're they're afraid to really pit their ideas against you know someone else. Because they will That's be exposed. Yes. They push they they will not talk to you. Right. And that and the other thing that I worry about is that the elite left has figured out to their credit how to consolidate power. They, they've really, they've got a lateral cooperation going on. Yeah, they're good at it. I'll give them that. They're good I wish at they're it. on my team. Yeah. They are good they're at just, it. And the, the, Aren't the, they like the, the, the damn the or they back, good? The pushback is atomized. <laughs> the pushback on the right, or whatever you want to call the right, or even the, the middle or the, the independents, is kind of all over the place. Right? You, got, you got Rogan in the podcast. You got Tulsi Gabbard. You got, you know, you got the Republicans over here, but some of them are too crazy. Other ones are too, sort of like in the middle. It just goes, it goes on and on. So it's a little bit more like discombobulated. You, you know it's wild to me. It's okay though. Like to me, it is okay. It, it, it's, yeah. And it's honestly, it's good because this is the difference. And we talked about it's like who are the elite? Right. Who are the elite? They are the people who are part who are part of this powerful cabal that includes big pharma, the military industrial complex. It includes Democrats and Republicans. So powerful. It includes the propaganda yep. media. These people, as you said, Brian, on the way here, people who can get away with anything. They are never held accountable, and they, they, they don't are, pay a price for being and wrong. They are taking actions that serve their own selfish interests, whether it be power or money. And and those, yes, they are very much collaborating with one another because they have a shared interest. I choose the messy, noisy loudness anarchy. of a free freaking society, no. not anarchy. No, a free society that that how that, it should be. That is America. That's it what's is. crazy. Yeah, like you're that doing the right thing. That is how founding fathers were, though. Like they screamed at each yes. other in the middle of a freaking town square. They called each other yes. names. Yeah, that's the they way to do it. They argued in private. They argued in public. But they came together around the most fundamental, most important things that make our country what it is. Which is to preserve the First freedom. Amendment, preserve these and things. And what's best for freedom. American American people, exactly. which they've gotten away from. Exactly. What's wild to me, this might be a hot take, and we have to edit this, let me know. But like back in the day when a president, like if Trump was in the 60s, like, like uh, JFK was, they figured out a way to get rid of him, right? JFK, see ya, dude. We're out of here. You go against Cuba and the missile crap, you're out of Bay of Pigs, you're out of here. I can't believe with Trump, they, as much as they, there's never been a more hated candidate, there's never been a more hated president from the Democrats than Trump. How there hasn't been some sort of, hey, that hey, we know hey, of. Hey, bro. B Easy. You know what I'm saying, though? No, it's... it's. I'm going to say, say the I, I word that rhymes with here, passionation. No, I know, but here's, here's, but here's a very real danger, and I've spoken about this on Fox News and in other places because it's important for people to see what's going on. When you have this steady drumbeat of people in positions of influence and power telling the American people 
that Trump is the modern day Hitler. Mm -hmm. And then you have historians and other people of influence saying, well, gosh, if only if I lived during the time of Hitler's rise and reign and I had the opportunity to take him out, I would have done it. Mm -hmm. So what message does that send to people? Right. All it takes is one deranged person believing that they are, that doing, they God's are work. doing God's yep. work, that they are justified, that they will go down in the annals of history yep. as the guy who saved America. Yep. That's all it takes. And, and, and then you have, who was it just recently? Um, gosh, who was it? It was like a Keith, Keith Olbermann, oh, I think. Oh, that guy. No, he's bad. Yeah, he's Didn't, he just, there was a tweet where somebody was like, oh, you know. I, it, it was an but, indirect call for essentially. But they, don't have, to, to do they don't have to kill him. They're trying. They, they do it different now. They're yeah. doing it different. It's that they drum beat up. Exactly. He's Hitler. He's a narcissist. How many he's the worst 91 ever. Yeah. indictments? 91? Yeah. You got four different, like, Felony four indictments, different, by the way. Four, Felony, different, yeah. four different court cases yeah. with very ambitious DA. Yeah. They kill you different now. They kill yeah. you with, with your, he's got to pay $130 million that got brought down from four hundred. He's got, he's going to be in court for a long time. He faces over get you out 300 of here. years in prison. Yes. Yeah. This has That's never been done before. But what's wild is like the Democrats doing that, making this enemy, this evil person, the Republican Party, it's building because the, they're going, look what they're doing because they're privy to it because they're educated. They're going, look what they're doing. And it's just building yeah. this uproar for Trump. The Democrats thought it was going to do something different and get yeah. everybody on board against Trump, but it's building Hopefully bigger. independents are uneasy with this banana republic idea yeah. of going after our leaders. Exactly. That's very scary. Because yeah, because what do you think? Not good for our this is my fear exactly. with Trump. And I, I much prefer Trump over Biden, be very clear. My fear is Trump is his ego so big, he gets into, you know, he, he gets elected, and it's a revenge tour instead of making America better tour. Here's, what, here's why I don't think that'll happen. And I don't have any insider knowledge or anything, but this is my personal As opinion. As his vice president, you would never let that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they started all this in 2016, mm-hmm. It was very clear how uh, the forces of the Washington permanent elite were were uh, colluding against him while he was running. It continued as he was president. If that were his aim, why didn't he do it back then? Why didn't he do yeah, it when he was president? Point. It's a good point. Rally after rally after rally. What was what was the the chant we most often heard about Hillary? Crooked Hillary. Lock, Lock her, her up. up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Did he do it? No. Nope. No. Nope. He didn't do it. Uh, so the Democrats it, it, are doing this it. is this is <laughs> an argument that that the Democrats are using to try to scare people. Even Robert De Niro, I saw, did an interview of yep. like how terrified, like like he may get arrested if Trump is elected. Oh God. Uh, but this Still is a, again. I talked movie. about like everybody. Be very aware of these distraction tactics. <gasps> they got me. These fear mongering. I just, yeah, I just. <gasps> They got me. That's how good they are. Uh, it's true. Think though. about it. I was just it's saying true. that. Revenge no, it's true. Revenge tour. It's true. Uh, and it, and it's all with the intent of making people afraid uh, and distracting away from the fact that every single day they're taking away our freedoms, our yes. fun, like right to free speech, right to see the information we want to see, our right to defend ourselves, our right to live in a safe community. They don't want us to pay attention American to that. American values. So they are trying to show us, like, hey, oh, look at this me. boogeyman here. They got me. <laughs> last question. I know you got to go. Last one, Chin. Chin's like, we got to get last one. The TikTok ban. Yes. Is that a Trojan horse? Is it a Trojan horse being like, look, we got to get rid of TikTok, and then there's more to follow? Where they're gonna, I, will, I will paraphrase the words of Ron Paul. The great uh, Ron Paul. The great Ron Paul, Legend. who I strongly agree with. Me too. He said that this legislation that's being billed uh, as a TikTok ban and necessary in the name of national security is the biggest power grab by our government of our freedom and liberty since the Patriot Act. Damn. Wow. So Damn. Trojan horse. Yeah, because if they can do it to TikTok, they can do it to Facebook. They can but do think it what they're doing. And they can do it to any individual. So, yes. so one of the, the very vague and dangerous lines in there says that uh, any, just as, as they're you know forcing divestment of any company that's under control of a foreign adversary, uh, they can also do this same to an individual. Even an American citizen, wow, who they deem to be under the quote unquote control or influence of a foreign adversary. Wow. And I say this as a person who's been accused by none other than Hillary Clinton and, and Mitt Romney as being a 
quote unquote Russian asset or puppet of <laughs> they Putin. They say that about you? Oh yeah. They say it about Elon. Yeah. So anybody. there's there's literally anybody, there's yeah. you know, That's they say it about Tucker Carlson. Yeah, they say it about anybody oh, who it's their go to, yeah. It, it is their go to. It is an incredibly dangerous bill and people should be very concerned by how fast it was passed through yes. Congress. And I think uh, I think every probably, every member of I think the 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 no votes on that bill in the House was like sixty five people voted no. Yep, that's a big again. When do both parties come together in overwhelming yeah, force? Never. National security, wow. quote unquote, war. national security yeah. war, and power, both of which are used to take away liberty. Because the way they paint is that it's a it's a rush, it's a Chinese asset. Don't buy, they're taking our information. They need to sell. And you know who's don't. been super quiet about all this? Meta, Google. Yeah, like they who, want to buy it, right? Well, they either want to buy it or they want the market to themselves. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they want them gone. No, yeah. TikTok's <laughs> massive. They're, they're like, yeah, take oh, them and out. Yeah, by yeah, the yeah. way, they'll do the same thing. By the they'll way, just replicate like, it. who's actually uh, working with the FBI and the Biden White House to censor people? Meta. So, of course. So, you got X who's not playing ball. You got TikTok. They got no control over TikTok and what TikTok is doing. You just start to put the pieces together and, and we have a far more well-informed view of a more stressed out <laughs> <laughs> let's let's end show. with this let's end with this give me something good aloha yeah i'll aloha. take that aloha aloha, <laughs> aloha and th and i and i mean this in all seriousness aloha made you smile yes, first of all it did but aloha is is a really powerful word that is used we were watching moana in your house last night Great with your kid movie. um aloha is a powerful word that is used as a greeting doesn't mean hello or goodbye it means uh alo means to share and ha refers to the eternal life force that exists within every one of us mm. and so when we greet each other with aloha it is an intentional uh word that inspires us to see past all the noise all the labels all the crap and actually have a meaningful engagement based on respect for each other uh, because of the spiritual connection that we share as children of God, regardless of who we are, where we come from. And so when we look at how do we get past all these obstacles, the divisiveness, the hate, we get back to the most important thing, which is that we treat each other with respect. We recognize the connection that we share. Mm -hmm. We recognize these fundamental principles of freedom that is within our interest to come together to defend. And that is the first step towards actually being able to save our country and ourselves and solve the problems that we face. Aloha. Damn. Can white aloha. males say aloha? Yes. We're from Hawaii. Everyone look, can you say look, aloha. You look a little Samoan. We've already established <laughs> I'm not thick that. enough, though. You're thick. <laughs> Bobby, you're thick. Samoans what do you mean you're thick. not thick? I'm so, 238, man. You, 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 you gotta you, eat you some more taro. You want to be right. Right. No, no, <laughs> you are, You're actually thin. Yeah, 238, 238. But you... you, you you're you're Simone. You're All Simone right, Strong. <laughs> Simone Strong. Yeah, true. Yep. Senior. Tulsi. Right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, good awesome. luck. So much fun. Good Thanks luck. Thanks for hanging best. out with me you're today. Welcome. The book's available for sale. Tulsi Gabbard for Love of Country. Where, where, where do they get the book? Uh, you can order it from Amazon.com or you can order it from TulsiGabbard.com. You can order a, a signed copy there and uh, it will be delivered to your mailbox on April 30th. Sweet. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Get out of here. They're going to kill us. I know. Thank you guys so much.